Hello, I'm Joe Ramey and today is Sunday, February the 1st. This presentation will give a summary of the results of January weather and then give a climate outlook for February and the February-March-April season. Here are some monthly statistics from regional airports. In the top portion of the slide is precipitation, indicating January was generally a dry month. The exceptions were at Grand Junction and Durango, which ended the month over half an inch above normal. Most of this precipitation fell in two storms on January 11th through the 13th and the 30th through the 31st. In the lower half of the slide, monthly temperatures were much warmer than normal. Most sites averaged around 4 degrees warmer than normal over the 31-day period, which is quite warm. Vernal's value of 8 degrees warmer than average is very unusual. With a generally dry January, snowpack fell further and further below normal, especially to the south and west. Near normal snowpack continued near the Continental Divide. Here is what annual precipitation graphs look like for three representative sites in this forecast area, Vernal, Utah, Grand Junction, and Cortez, Colorado. For most of eastern Utah and western Colorado, February is typically a relatively dry month, but begins the transition into the second wettest season of the year, which is spring. Here's what the upper level weather pattern looked like to begin the month of February 2015. First on the plains and moving east was the low pressure system that brought our rain and snow showers on January 30th and 31st. But the dominant feature was the strong ridge of high pressure along the west coast. Pacific storms diving over the ridge during the first few days of February were forecast to bring snow to the mountains of northwest Colorado, with the best snowfall expected near the Wyoming border. And now going forward in time with the same GFS model to 10 February, you can see the ridge has shifted inland but is still in place over the west. This supports the latest outlook for the second week of February, showing a strong shift of probabilities towards warmer and drier than normal. So the large-scale weather pattern that we saw through much of January looks to continue into at least mid-February. Beyond that, we look to the state of the Pacific for hints to storm track and intensity. Here is the late January chart showing how current sea surface temperatures vary from normal. The equatorial Nino 3.4 region, roughly enclosed in the red box, has not been warm enough long enough to classify this winter as El Nino. But note the large area of warm waters off the coast of southern Alaska and British Columbia. These waters are best described by the Pacific Decadal Oscillation Index. So again, the Nino 3.4 region of the Pacific is warm, but not warm enough to yet be called an El Nino, at least by NOAA. But the Pacific Decadal Index is very warm, the warmest values seen in December, January, or February since the index began in 1900. What does a warm winter PDO mean? Well, if we correlate PDO and precipitation, you can see an increased correlation in the desert southwest that extends up into our forecast area. For February on the left, the correlation is weaker. For the season of February, March, April on the right, the correlation is stronger. So a stronger PDO tends to favor a wetter late winter into spring season. The correlations we just saw with PDO seem to support the latest outlooks from the Climate Prediction Center. Across the top are the temperature and precipitation outlooks for February. These show a shift of odds towards warmer than normal monthly conditions and potentially wetter than normal across the southern forecast area. Across the bottom are the outlooks for the three-month season of February, March, and April. Here is a shift of odds towards warmer than normal for northeast Utah and wetter than normal for the entire forecast area, favoring the south. To summarize, the current weather pattern with a ridge over the western states supports dry and mild conditions for the first half of February. Thereafter, the climate signals in the Pacific indicate a wetter pattern beginning sometime in late February or March. Odds are we will have a wetter than normal spring season. There is less certainty about spring temperatures. That was a quick synopsis of January's climate numbers and a forecast into the spring of 2015. 
You can get the latest forecast and conditions at our website or follow us on Facebook or Twitter. Thank you for listening and enjoy our mild winter.